Welcome back, everyone. Um, I wanted to talk some more about calculating area under the curve. Um, I actually want to continue the example we finished in the the last video, right? So if you haven't seen that yet, go go back and look at it. Uh, what we were trying to do is we were trying to find the area under the curve f of x equals x cubed minus 6x um, as we range from a equals 0 to b equals 3. We were using six rectangles and we were trying to determine the height of the rectangle using the right endpoints. So what you see in the screen right here is actually uh, the graph of the function y equals x cubed minus 6x. And you can see here in green and red uh, the associated rectangles uh, to that area under the curve. And so like we saw last time, some of the areas, some of the rectangles lived above the x-axis. Those are going to have positive areas because uh, the y-coordinate is positive there. And those are illustrated on this Desmos website in green. And then there are some rectangles that have negative area uh, that will be found. on Those are below the x-axis. And on this Desmos app, they are um, illustrated here in red. And if you want to play around with this calculator yourself, there's a link uh, below in this video. So feel free to use that. Um, and so this, this is actually a nice calculator that can help us do uh, calculate these areas in the curves because as you saw in the last video we had six rectangles and there was a lot of a, a, a tedious arithmetic we had to go through I didn't even show you all of them because uh, we had to calculate f of 0.5 f of 1 f of 1.5 f of 2 etc um, and there was some arithmetic going on there that I had done prior to the video so you didn't even see it uh, these things can get very tedious very quick and man was not meant to do these type of calculations that's why man invented calculator so I wanted to show you some online calculators that you can use to help you out as you try to approximate these areas under the curve here. Um, and so this Desmos one I show you first because I like it because it actually um, can show you not just the answer, but it shows you geometrically what's going on right here. So I notice this thing is manipulative, right? So you can type in the function. Uh, so you have you can type this in. You can change that if you want to. You can change the left endpoint, and that affects things. I'm going to put it back to zero, right? Um, I don't, we'll just leave it there. Uh, you can switch the right endpoint as well, and it changes in real time. Um, of course, you can also change the number of rectangles here. Uh, let's say we want to go up to, oh, it doesn't want me to change this. Um, well, I'll, let's, let's kind of see what it looks like there. You can change the number of rectangles. Something like that. Uh, you can also change this value right here. Uh, this C value changes the sampling points, the xi star, and there's some instructions right here what's going on here. Negative three doesn't even make any sense for rectangles. What do you do in computer? Uh, this needs to go from zero uh, to 100. Yeah, that's a, that's a good number of rectangles. We'll do five at the moment. Uh, so going back to the C here, just understand what's going on here. Uh, the C is representing the method of choice, how you're gonna choose the xi star. If you choose C to equal one, it computes using the right endpoint rule. Um, if you choose C to be zero, let's try that again. If you choose C to be zero, it'll choose the left endpoints. And if you choose C to be one half, um, it chooses the midpoints of the interval. And so this number right here, this I right here, whichever you're looking at, that'll tell you the area under the curve, its estimate. Uh, and so that number changes. This is the answer you're looking for. If you're looking for the right endpoint rule, the left endpoint, or the midpoint rule, or the left endpoint rule like this. And then I also added the trapezoid rule here where it averages together the left and right endpoint rules. Uh, we talked about each of these in lecture uh, 43. So if we put this back to six and we put this to three and we put this to zero and right endpoint rule. Come on, you can do it. Oh, this web app doesn't really like to work with my recorder very well. Ah, it's come alive again. Uh, so this right here was the exercise we had done in the previous video. And you'll see that the answer we got was the same, negative 3.9375. So this Desmos website does pretty nice for computing uh, these the these so-called Riemann sums. Uh, we'll talk about those more a little in, the, in a future video here. Helps us calculate this error to the curve. Um, another one I'm going to advertise to you is through... Uh, emathhelp.net. 
Um, it has a pretty nice calculator as well. They have a lot of calculators. Um, I, I like the calculator they have here a lot, although my one real big concern with eMath Help is their ads are extremely annoying and in your face all the time. Uh, fortunately, my recording app is kind of having some issues with some of them, which is good news for us. When I personally go to this website, I have a pretty nice uh, ad blocker, maybe. You know, I know ads are how they make their money, but at the same time, I don't want what they're selling. So feel free to block them to their doom if you have to. Uh, but what you can see here is it's similar to what you saw in Desmos. You can enter your function x cubed minus 6x, set your a value, set your b value, set the number of rectangles, and you can choose how you're going to choose the sample points. And so then there's going to be a step, click uh, button down here that says calculate. Um, and so it takes a second to calculate. It'll, re it'll reload the page. Uh, and now you get some new advertisements. Seriously, go to the U. No, no, go to SUU. Come on, what are you thinking there, internet? Why does it think I want to go to the U right now? Anyways, um, and you might not be able to see this super well uh, on this video, but if you if you go to the website yourself, the link is below. Uh, you can this will look at a lot. This will look a lot better to your screen. You can manipulate the sizes and things. So it'll repeat itself and tell you that you're trying to find the area under the curve x cubed minus six as you go from zero to three. This integral notation will make more sense in a future lecture. So just uh, just postpone a little bit there. Um, and so you have your function. You go from a equals zero to b equals three, six subdivisions. It then calculates the delta x, which you got one half. And then calculates each of the xi's. So we have the interval 0 to 1 half, 1 half to 1, 1 half to 3 halves, 3 halves to 2, 2 to uh, two to 5 halves, and 5 halves to 3, just like we did before. It calculates each of those values, f of x1, which was negative 2.875, f of x2, which was negative 5. You go through all of those. So it gives you all of those details. And then in the end, it'll give you the value 1 half times the sum of all those things. You get the negative 3, uh, the negative... 3.9375. So if you're only interested in the final answer, it'll calculate that for you. But also, um, it shows you each and every step along the way so you can kind of understand where the calculation is coming from. If you don't want to see the steps, you can actually click where it says show steps. And if you turn that off, um, it'll do the calculation again with just the, just the final answer there. Um, so, uh, you know, hidden amongst many ads here, but negative 3.9375 here. Um, so what I want to do is just do another example of this. Uh, so this time, let's take the function x squared, and we're going to go on the interval 0 to 4. Uh, let us do four subdivisions. Uh, why is this thing stubborn? There we go. We're going to do four subdivisions, so four rectangles. And this time, I want to use midpoints. So for the Desmos one, I have to choose this C to be 0.5. And so you can see right here, if you go from zero, I'm sorry, not zero to four. Uh, I want to go from zero to one. That's the example I have prepared. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So you have your standard parabola, y equals x squared. And so if you look at the area under the curve using uh, these rectangles, you get the four rectangles you see right there. Their height is determined by the midpoint. So we're uh, getting uh, these values right here. And then if you scroll down, you can see the estimate uh, the area is going to be approximately 0.328125. That's approximately how good the area is under the curve. And like we saw in previous videos, the midpoint rule does pretty good because although the midpoint rule at some points might overestimate, at other points it underestimates, and it kind of averages out to be a pretty good estimate. Um, if we were to do that with the EMath e -math help calculator, we type it in, x squared, use a caret there for exponents. We want to go from 0 to 1, 4 rectangles, and then we can choose our scheme here. There's the left rule, the right rule, the midpoint rule, and the trapezoid rule. So we'll pick the midpoint rule. And I do want to show the, the, the steps here. So let's calculate. So this gives us all the explanation of what was going on in that calculation, right? So we're trying to approximate the area of under the curve, 0 to 1, x squared. We had four rectangles. We're using the, the midpoint rule here. So we're going to calculate each of these midpoints. Uh, x0 plus x1 over 2, x1 plus x2 over 2, x3 plus x, x2 plus x3 over 2. Keep on going. Um, in this situation, your delta x will be 1 minus 0 over 4, which is 1 fourth. Um, you're, you're getting a four subintervals, and it'll look like 0 to a fourth, a fourth to 1 half, a half to 3 fourths, and 3 fourths to 1. And then if you find the midpoint of each of these intervals, you're going to get 1 eighth, 3 eighth, 5 eighths, and 7 eighths. Calculate the function at those values. Since it's the squaring function, we get 1 64th, 
964, 2564s, and 4964s. There's the decimal expansions there as well. So we have to add together those four values, times it by delta x, which is one fourth, and then you get the, the value 0.328125. So that's pretty cool, because uh, these calculators can give you all the details you need um, as you're working through these things. And again, I do want, I want people to use calculators. These type of numerical approximations should be done with a calculator. It's very important that uh, everyone understands exactly what the calculation is, what's going on, we should know what's going under the hood, so to speak. But please use technology to help you so you don't spend years upon years trying to calculate these things. And I'll talk some more about those in the next video. Uh, look at the link below to find it and please subscribe. Bye.